All right, so uh, I had to move over here uh, into the trailer uh, just because everybody's coming home. It was getting pretty loud. So um, I want to share with you first is the uh, what I got from Brewers Hardware. So this came in today, my United States Postal Service, and um, I'll show you what I got there because of what I have coming. I had to order this. So luckily they've they make exactly what I need, so dump that sucker out. Lots of stainless steel. Amazingness. That's what that is. Good. That's about it, right? I think. Maybe. Maybe not. Yep. That's it. So this is what I got right here. So what this is, is a uh triclover uh fitting that goes to a one inch BSP. And so the reason I got this is because I have a Herms coil coming in um, that I'll share once that gets here tomorrow or the next day um, for that. And so I'm getting a new Herms coil and I've got that coming in. And so I needed, uh, because it's in BSP, all of my fittings being in America, uh, all my fittings are uh, national pipe. And so standard metric don't work the same way. So didn't want to have any issues there with that. Um, they do recommend that it, it goes down to reducer. I just thought, why am I going to have a reducer when I can get the fitting I need? Um, main reason why you would do the reducer is just because it's really hard to find one inch BSPs. I couldn't, I couldn't find anything on Amazon here or anything. Um, and so it was really, really hard to find it. But luckily, um, I thought came in, well, why do I need an adapter to go from BSP to NTP? Um, NSP national pipe. So, um, you know, why, why do I need that? Why do I need adapters? Just cut the middleman out and we'll go from, go from there. So, um, yeah, luckily I was able to find this, track this down. Um, and triclovers are way more sanitary, so I'll probably be switching a lot of my connections over. I had that planned anyways to switch a lot of my connections over, um, eventually. So that's good. So I got that. And then what I got to fit off of said fitting was just a regular barb fitting for now. So those guys will made up and then half inch hose go on that with a hose clamp a little simple white silicone tubing high tamp and we'll run that on over to uh, uh to the pump and then back to the mash gun um coming in the mail too so all that stuff's good picked up some gaskets as well for those guys because gonna need gaskets gotta get good sealant clamps on that sucker nice shiny because you know just like in hot rods, chrome will make it go, stainless steel makes it brew. <laughs> I don't know. I laugh at my own jokes. You got it, right? Anything to keep it going. All right, next thing. This is what I'm really excited about. Um, so this came from, um, make sure I get the website right, glutenfreehomebrewing.com. And again, I will uh, post a link to that in my bio uh, for that. So they have gluten-free grain um, that you can get. And so, let's see, this was the first box. And this has, so basically everything gluten-free that you need for brewing um, out the door. Everything you need to order came pretty much vacuum sealed. Um, this one, not so much, but um, so we got here is rice holes. So, sweet deal on that, one pound of rice holes. Very nice on um, that coming from a gluten-free facility. So um, I thought, ah, you know, I really don't need that. You know, I just pick it up at my local homebrew shop and I was like, ooh, is it going to be dedicated gluten-free? I couldn't, I couldn't establish that, that chain of custody. So I chose just, it's, I'm already going to be buying the grain. Why not just pay the extra and buy that too? So I did that. So I got two pounds of it, two pounds of that already ready to go. And then, this guy here, 
Boom. Now this is pale millet malt. And so millet is a uh, gluten-free grain, similar to like quinoa, buckwheat, uh, sorghum, um, things like that. And so millet is, you know, pretty similar to, uh, to barley. Um, from my understanding, don't quote me on that. I don't, I'm not a scientist. I don't grow grain. I'm not a, a botanist or anything like that. Or however, you know, anything in egg. All I know is it looks a lot like quinoa though. Um, I don't know if you can really see um, that, but that's what the kernels uh, look like or the grain seeds look like. Um, they're just little mini, mini balls. So this is five pounds of this, the level bond, level bond of 1.5. Um, and so it's not the most ideal um, brewing grain, but it is possible to brew off of it. Um, you, It is recommended by the site to use um, some amylase uh, enzymes to help aid uh, the uh, conversion, starts conversions. And so there's that. And then um, also in this pack, uh, I bought some uh, Brewcraft gypsum, Brewcraft uh, calcium chloride. And this stuff looks like pretty, I mean, you can get that pretty much just about anywhere. And then some World Flock as well, um, tablets. They seem like they were decently priced. Um, and this is a recipe that um, I got um, from the Malster um, to try for a Amarillo Citra Pale Ale. And so it uh, came with, uh, you know, YCH uh, pellets for the Yakima uh, Chief Hop Union. And so got those there, Amarillo, Citra. Good stuff to go, so we'll go ahead and try that out. Uh, I don't believe it. I've never brewed with uh, Citra before. I've brewed with Amarillo before one time. Um, I, I like it. I like the hop. Um, so, although I don't believe I've used um, YCH before. So we'll see on that. And then uh, in the move, I, I wasn't able to fit a lot of my brew gear over here. So um, there's some stuff that, you know, kind of got misplaced either in packing. I don't know where it went in the meantime. And when I get it, it may not be good. So I got some pH uh, stabilizer, uh, 5.2 stabilizer. Um, they recommend to use dry yeast uh, for it because I haven't found a yeast that is gluten-free, 100% dedicated gluten-free facility. Um, they all do the crafting process and they state right there. So example, White Labs, uh, they have uh, Clarifirm, their enzyme, which will drop uh, the gluten content you know, down to below where it's legally gluten-free, but unfortunately they're not able to confirm that 100% of the time that it's gonna stay below 20 parts per million. And so what I assume is legal reasons. They choose to, you know, cause you don't wanna get somebody sick, tell them it's gluten-free and then it's not gluten-free. That's that's a jerk move. I mean, what, what that can do to you is if you have celiac or if you have another condition that, that sets off, um, you know, from from gluten content or gluten contamination, um, you know, it's no good. But apparently, um, a safe level, uh, US05 is, I've brewed with this before, um, uh, back when I first started extract brewing, I've brewed with this a couple times, um, works great, you know, it's tried and true, um, but because it's dry yeast, you know, it's always good to rehydrate it first and get it going, so I'm probably gonna make a starter off this, so, and we can get that, get that rolling with that that's everything i got in that box it took two boxes to get this here um so i also had like a coupon code for a couple dollars off gluten-free beer batter mix so i said a yes i will definitely do that so i'm gonna brew this beer and then i'm gonna use that in this gluten-free beer batter mix so i can't wait hopefully it'll be good I'm gonna do fish and chips. I'm gonna split it because I want fish. I know my father-in-law is probably gonna like fish um, and chips. And then um, 
My boys might like it too, and I know my wife isn't gonna want fish. She want chicken, so we'll see if we can do that. Um, with all the shipping labels and stuff, and uh, your stuff, it has a lot of cool, you know, FAQs on the back of different like tutorials and things to go check on their website. They have a lot of information on how to do this. And then also they uh, gave me this attached to it. It's a carboy tag. So, you know, you can go ahead and track stuff on it. It's pretty good. Pretty cool. Awesome stuff. All right, so I've got more grain here. These are roasted uh, buckwheat malt. And so it is roasted. It, it does only have a level bond though, even though it's dark as that is, apparently 6.5. So it's two pounds of that. And man, it smells, it smells great. A lot of chocolate flavor it smells like in there. So that'll be good with that. And then this one here is just pale millet malt, which is the same as the other one from before. Um, two pounds of that, 1.5 level bond. Uh, what else do I got here? This guy right here, light roasted. It's got focus. Light roasted millet malt there. Level bond is seven. So there's that guy. And then we got another two pounder of uh, pale millet. This one just looks really, really cool because of the different coloring in it. But it's crystal, crystal millet. So I don't know if it'll focus there. But. Two pounds of that guy. I love the smell of grain. It smells so sweet and so tasty. It's gonna make good beer. I can feel it. Some more light roasted millet. And some gluten-free uh, maltodextrin powder right there. So on the initial stuff of stocking up on, um, you know, this is one pound of this stuff with uh, stocking up on it. It, you know, was probably, I think it was like 100, 150 or 160 to get all of the grain, not including the brewer's hardware, that, that's not included, but all of the, the grain, the hops, the yeast, water additives. Um, and then I did get two things of enzyme solution here um, for it. They say you should get it, so I don't want to do it wrong the first time out the gate. Do it right by the book. So we've got just some of that guy there. Some uh, save ammo L. If I'm saying that right, I have no idea. And then liquid endo alpha alumase. So they're supposed to work um, work together. And that one's for a lower. Looks like I could probably use this conversion from all up to 230 degrees. So basically it's like a lower end um, enzyme for converting. And then you add this enzyme and this will go all the way up. So basically you get a good mix across your um, your mash temperatures for uh, starch conversion. And that should help pull out a lot because the husks don't have a lot of those enzymes um, naturally present like barley does, which is why barley is such a great grain to work off of. Because you, you could use enzymes to aid Aid you, but you can usually get by and make pretty decent beer without it. Um, you know, it's just all about what you want to do to, you know, take it to the next level or, you know, trying to pursue a, a uh, metal or something like that. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. But, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and pack all this up. Thanks for hanging out. Um, direct message me, shoot me a message, uh, comment below. Um, what you think, what you, uh, wanna, any questions, comments, things like that. Look forward to hearing from you. Thanks guys. Bye.